here. I'm Mubin Begum Salim from RMK College of Engineering and Tech. And in this coursework, I'm in hand in hand with one of my peers, Madhumeda. And our project is breast cancer analysis. So what is breast cancer? It's a disease in which the cancer cells form in the tissues of the breast. Early detection of breast cancer can improve survival chances given that there is proper medication. So it seems like we can possibly save someone's life from data. Isn't that cool? Okay, at this point in time, I've got you with a really easy question, but still a dicey one, which is, do men get breast cancer? Well, if your answer is no, you're probably wrong because the stats prove that men do get breast cancer. It's just that the ratio in which men get to women is greatly reduced. And the technology being used here is machine learning with Python. So I'll be importing some of the libraries such as Pandas, NumPy, sklearn, etc. You can also use Anaconda, which is a free open source. But here I'll be going with google.colab.com. So the first step is obtaining the data set. And the data set used here is actually obtained from the University of Wisconsin. Next up, I'll be exploring the data set, kind of cleaning it a little bit. And then I'll be splitting my data into independent and dependent data sets. And then I'll be applying the a regression or a classifier models on the data set. So here I'm going with three models. You can go with any of your preferences. So I'll be using logistic regression, decision tree and random forest classifier. So as I said, there are tons of models to choose from, but how do we decide which one works the best for our data? So that's the place where the confusion matrix comes into play. The rows in the confusion matrix correspond to what the machine learning algorithm predicts and the columns correspond to the known truth. For an instance, consider the term positive to denote cancerous state and the term negative to denote the non-cancerous state. So the blocks true positive and true negative gives us the samples where our machine learning algorithm uh, predicted the cancerous um, cells to be cancerous that means the cells to be cancerous are non-cancerous respectively and the blocks false positive and false negative gives us the samples where our machine learning algorithm went wrong are basically messed up so i'll be using the accuracy formula to get the accuracy and there are a couple of things like f1 score precision etc which are linked with a confusion matrix but that's not the area of focus for us right now. So I'm going with only the accuracy. Now let's have a look at our um, program. So this program detects breast cancer based off of the data. So whenever you see the word detects, you can possibly think of a machine learning classifier. So as I said, I'll be importing some of the libraries such as NumPy, Pandas, SQLearn, etc. And as I'm on Google's website, I need to use Google's library to read my file from my desktop to the data frame. So for that, let me choose the file first. And I have used a variable called df, short form from data frame, and I'm going to set it equal to the file name over here, basically reading the file from my desktop. So it might take a little bit of time. And then I'll be printing the number of rows and number of columns. Like I'm going to uh, print seven columns of the data set. So yeah, here I've read the file and have printed them. So the first um, column is ID, second column is diagnosis, radius underscore mean, etc. There are a lot of columns over here. I hope you can read it off yourself. And here you can see that there are a number of columns that get repeated, like compactness underscore mean. And here you have compactness underscore SE. But this time it's SE, which stands for standard error. 
So these are just the you know different features which were observed. So we need not worry much about them. And we have at last a column called unnamed 32, and it, it has got values like NAN. So whether it is NAN or NA, we need to understand that these are like the empty values. Now I'm going to get the number of rows and columns of my data set. Okay, so it seems like it has got 569 rows of data and 33 columns. Now I'm going to get the number of empty values from each column. So when I have a look at this, I can find out that on, you know, only for this column called unnamed 32, this very less column called unnamed 32, all other columns have got zero empty values. So we have got only one column with empty values. So I'm going to basically drop this column. For that, I'll be using the drop up function I'm, and I'm giving access is equals to one because we have got only one column. Okay, now let's get the new number of columns and rows. And here we get 569 rows and 32 columns. So before it was 33 columns and now it is 32 column because I've dropped one of the columns. Okay, and then I'll be getting the count of the benign non-cancerous and the malignant cancerous cells from the column called diagnosis because this is the column which gives us the info about the malignant and benign cells. So it is found that benign cells are 357 whereas malignant are 212. Okay, let's get a visual of this and I'm going to plot it. So since it is from the diagnosis column, I'm getting it from this and then I'm labeling it uh, the y-axis to be count, count of malignant and benign cells from the x-axis, which is the diagnosis column. This is just that we have made it look a little bit better, like more visually appealing, you know, rather than just reading the numbers, right? And then I'm going to get the data types of all the columns because we need to identify which are the categorical data that need to be transformed or encoded because um, we are using machine learning, right? We need to speak machine's language. So here we can see that except for this column called diagnosis, all other columns have got values. So only the diagnosis column has got object file in Python. So that's the categorical data that we are going to transform into our encoded values. So for that, I'll be using the fit transform of method and I'll be transforming the benign cells as zero and the malignant cells as one, okay? And then I'll be getting a pair plot. Pair plot is also known as scatter plot, okay? And I'm giving a hue is equals to diagnosis because I want to differentiate the malignant cells from the, um, you know, non-cancerous benign cells. So I'm going to give a hue equals to diagnosis. And if you're wondering what this iLock is, iLock just gives you the location, okay? So here the location is that all the rows from column one to column 10, which means index zero to index nine. Hopefully that wasn't confusing. So yeah. This is the pair plot for all the columns, but here um, I have got only for 10 columns, but there are actually like um, 32 columns and that might take a little bit of time. So I'm just showing you the 10 columns, okay? So here you can see that zero is denoted by blue color and malignant, which is one is denoted by orange color. Okay, so now let's get our new cleaner data. Okay, let's read the number of columns and rows of our new cleaner data. And let's print it. So here you can see that in the diagnosis column, you have got the values, the encoded values, whereas before 
In the darkness's column, we had something like malignant and benign springs. And now we have got values. One or zero. And now I'm going to get a correlation of all these columns. For that, I'll be using the correlation of method. And let's make this more visually appealing. So I'm going to get, you know, a visual of this correlation. And here I'm giving fixed size is equals to 10 comma 10 because I want the values or the blocks to be kind of, you know, separated. And for this, I'm using heat map because um, if you're not familiar with heat map, heat map is something like a basic tool in machine learning. And it's similar to that of your bar graphs, okay? It's just that in this, we'll be using color coding to differentiate the data. So as I said, fixed size is given as 10 comma 10 because I want these blocks to be, you know, a little bit farther away. Otherwise, this is going to be congested. And then I'm giving the anode to be true. This means that I want these values to be inside of these blocks. And then I'm formatting it as percentage, okay? Now that we have explored the data, cleaned it up, kind of manipulated it, let's finally get down to the classification part, okay? For that, I'm going to split the data into independent and dependent sets. X stands for independent set and a Y stands for dependent data sets. And then I'm going to in turn split this data set into 75% training and 25% testing. Okay, for that, I'm giving here the test size as 0.25, which means the default value for training will be 0.75. And I'm giving the random state to be zero. And we have to make sure that this value is maintained throughout the program. If you change this, it's gonna mess up the whole program. And then I'll be scale, uh, scaling the data. Okay, it's also known as feature scaling, which means I want all the features to be at the same level of magnitude, which basically means I want all the features to be like within a specific range, for example, either 0 to 100 or 0 to 1. And then I'll be creating a function to hold all my three models. So I'll be importing all my models from sklearn library, and then I'll be printing the accuracy as well. For that, I'll be creating a variable called model and I'll be uh, setting it equal to all the models and I'll be printing the accuracy. So the model with index zero is logistic, with index one is decision free and with index two is random forest classifier. When we have a closer look at this, we can find that the model that did the best on the training data has turned out to be the decision tree because its accuracy is 1.0, which is 100% send percent. Now let's test our model's accuracy on the test data, okay? For that, I'll be importing the confusion matrix from the sklearn, and then I'm giving all the models inside a for loop, and then I'm initializing the confusion matrix then I'll be printing the models index and then the confusion matrix values and finally the accuracy. So as you can see over here, we have got the model with the index, the confusion matrix and the accuracy. And when we look at this, we find that the model that did the best on the testing data turned out to be the model two, which is the random forest classifier, all right? It has got a accuracy of around 96.5%, something around 97%, right? Which means the error rate, which is one minus accuracy, has to be something around 3%. So let's try to identify or visualize what the error rate is actually like. So I'm going to print our prediction 
model so in the form of an aware matrix and then i'm going to print my um you know actual data so this print off um, basically means a new line okay so okay here we have got one zero 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 okay it's pretty much the same but when you try to look at the second row last element in the prediction and the second row last element from the original data we find out that the original one is actually cancerous but the testing data the prediction has turned out to be zero which means non-cancerous so this is false negative which means our model has predicted it to be negative non-cancerous but it is false because actually the patient is cancerous okay so this says us that our accuracy rate has turned out to be around 97 percent and error rate is three percent um actually it's pretty much good but when dealing with human lives oh, we can't uh, we can't take any chance right accuracy should be something around 100 percent or at least nearer to 100 percent for that we need to tune our models you know more or tune our data more so that we can get an accuracy which is closer to sun percent okay that brings us to the end of this presentation and i hope you guys liked it so a special thanks to shrija ma'am for organizing this and i would also like to thank the ec department for such great initiatives and yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining.